Uh, yeah, we are living at a time of a constitutional moment. Uh, the country is mobilizing. Uh, people are expressing their dissatisfaction with the way the government is moving forward with the reform, as well as with the content of the reform. Now, there was talk that the Prime Minister might have announced in a televised address earlier today that they would pause the legislation. So far, that hasn't happened. Do you think this still might be an intention? So far, the different uh, media outlets in Israel are uh, notifying us that we are expecting at any minute a notification that the government might halt the reform. However, we have been expecting such an announcement uh, over the past week. Uh, and uh, at the last moment, Netanyahu changed his mind, Prime Minister Netanyahu changed his mind and actually decided to move forward with the reform. Currently, he is under pressure from the most extreme factions within his coalition, especially the Minister of uh, Internal Security, Itamar Ben Gvir who is threatening to leave the coalition if uh, the uh, legislation is stopped. And they are currently meeting, and probably Prime Minister Netanyahu is trying to convince uh, Itamar Ben Gvir uh, to allow uh, him to stop the process. Yeah. So we are waiting to see what will happen. Yes, because he's, he, you know, just a couple of hours ago, he survived a no-confidence motion, but it would seem that that might have been largely on party lines. Do, it, do you see the coalition is starting to fracture a little over this reform? So it's actually there was no um, a confidence motion yet, uh, but um, it's hard to tell. On the one hand, uh, the coalition agreements include a provision that the government is committed to move ahead with the reform and to give the reform a priority over any other matter. So supposedly all coalition members are committed to the reform and we did not hear that any um, coalition party will leave the government if uh, the reform is advanced. On the other hand, there is a building pressure within the Israeli society and also among the international community expecting uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu to stop the process and enable a more consensual process as well as better protect uh, Israel's democracy. So uh, what is, it's hard to tell uh, now what is happening within the coalition are some members of the Likud actually threatening to leave the coalition or to vote against the government if the government does not stop the reform. Um, but uh, we are waiting mainly to see if Itamar ben the Minister of Internal uh, uh, Defense, is willing to enable uh, a different process for yeah. the reform. Which would be quite significant given the Defense Minister st st stood out against, you know, stopped and came out against it. He was sacked. Um, as a consequence, uh, where do you think the military is lying at the moment because of what they are seeing happening to civil society in Israel? Uh, I think that the um, uh, Minister of Defence position uh, was crucial uh, for the current uh, momentum that we are seeing uh, unfold in Israel. And um, when uh, the Israeli public saw that the Minister of Defense uh, was conveying the internal message of the head of the security services, that um, the, there must be a consensual process. And the reaction of Netanyahu was actually to fire the Minister of Defense. That was a major sign that there is an attempt to silence uh, the internal voices within the Israeli society, and, and this is a major uh, threat to democracy. We do not expect democratic leaders uh, to silence uh, uh, their minister of defense when the minister of defense is conveying the message from the, the chief of staff, from the head of the uh, Israeli security service, uh, from the head of the intelligence uh, services, uh, 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 conveying the message that Israel security is on the line. And then the reaction, okay, Maybe we should halt, maybe we should change the process, but the reaction was different. The reaction was, you're fired. So you, do, you don't see the heads of the security services uh, um, expressing uh, the opinion publicly, but they are ex uh, expressing it via the Minister of Defense, and they are 
uh, suggesting very delicately that Israel's security is on the line. But they don't, they don't say stop the reform, do a different process. They're just conveying the message, this is a moment of serious threat also to Israel's security, not just to its democratic nature. And, you know, to your point, I mean, the judicial reforms is, is, is really essentially what this reform is about. But what people are so angered about is what that means to Israel as a democracy. And as you say, not just in Israel, but internationally, people feel that Israel is verging down a path of no return. Definitely. I think that this is actually a, a very important question because a lot of focus has been on the institutional aspect of the reform and mainly the effects on the judicial branch. But people need to understand that we are a, facing a two-tier constitutional revolution. The first one is at the institutional level. It's the more immediate one. And it's not just a threat to the judicial system. It's also a threat to uh, the independence of uh, uh, the army, the police. Uh, not in the, we don't expect the army or the police to be totally independent. They are obviously subject to government control, but we expect the decisions to be professional. We expect deployment of forces at the police level to be professional. We expect the army uh, to use its uh, forces in a professional way, and we feel that even these kind of decisions are under threat. And the same applies to the media, the same applies to uh, uh, even uh, the Bureau of um, uh, Statistics, uh, the Central Bank of Israel, etc. So we mm -hmm. see a threat to the institutional level, and then we see a major threat to the value system of the Israeli society. So among the proposals, we have proposals to abolish equality as an implicit constitutional right in Israel. And when you think about the pluralist nature of the Israeli society, when you think about the fact that uh, there is a major component of the Israeli so uh, society that is uh, 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 the Arabic uh, minority in Israel, uh, when you think about the situation of women in Israel, that as is, we don't have separation between church and state in Israel, all this turns out to be a major threat. Major to the core values of Israel's society. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Really quite a moment in history. Rivka, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, it's a pleasure and thank you for allowing me to be part of your show. It was a great pleasure. Thank you.